Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, this is Mark Dempsey with the Converge Technology Center at Collin College in North Texas. Around the table here, we have Amber Healer, Christina Titus, and John Wynn. Um, welcome to our webinar, How to Implement a PC Clinic that Provides Students with Hands-On Experience. So before we begin, just a few quick little rules of engagement. Um, everybody's muted, which means any kind of questions or comments you have, send to the chat box in the WebEx window there. I'm monitoring that, so when the time is, when time is appropriate, I'll relay those questions to our speakers. Um, it just makes it more efficient that way. So use that chat box. And also, CCN members, um, you're getting points for this, so make sure you put your name <laughs> and your school in the chat box so I can record that you're here on the call. I see some names in the window, but those that I don't see, um, you need help me with that. All right, so I'm going to turn it over now to Christina Titus, and she is going to introduce our speakers. Hey, good morning. Um, so we have two of the um, ACN members who are presenting today. We have David, David Pope from Ozark Technical Community College and Chance Witherspoon from Cleveland Community College who are going to present um, <coughs> slightly different methods for PC um, clinic. So David? Good morning. Um, we started our program, I think the idea for the PC clinic started about uh, probably in the early 2000s as a conversation. Um, next slide. So as I said here in the intro slide, this is the exploration of progress of a pretty successful clinic. We've had some pretty good luck uh, and pretty positive response. Um, this is a tale to all concerned, anybody who wants to know about uh, how to do something like this. I've tried to provide the five W's here. Next slide. Um, the uh, clinic was started by a gentleman we know as Kelly Campbell. Uh, Mr. Campbell uh, passed away. We lost him about four years ago. More on that in a later slide. But uh, one thing I can say about Kelly is that he was a hardworking man. And uh, he actually was one of my students in PC hardware, uh, came on full time to teach for us. Uh, originally, our, our PC hardware class was in the electronics department. Uh, we had pushed it over there to make room for some additional uh, courses in our networking program. And eventually, it was absorbed back into the net program. But uh, Kelly, Kelly is the reason for its, uh, for its uh, origin. Next slide. So today. Uh, the person on the left that you see there, Mike Vest, he is, I guess, what uh, some would refer to as the ramrod. He is the uh, person who is the full-time manager of the clinic. He's also the instructor that runs the internship program within the clinic for the student participants. And uh, on the right is uh, our department chair and uh, my esteemed colleague, Mr. George Gibo. Um, he serves as advisor, although he does more than that. He sometimes comes in and, and helps uh, troubleshoot uh, machines and works uh, side by side with students. Next. So uh, the day-to-day uh, -day operations are uh, primarily uh, under Mike's jurisdiction. However, he does have a couple of part-time students that work for him. Uh, they're regular, uh, uh, considered to be regular students, uh, although I do believe they draw a paycheck. We do have work-study students as well who uh, earn a little bit of money. And then we have uh, the internship or the co-op students. And these are students who are in, our, in the intern program, the intern class in our degree, and uh, are earning uh, co-op credit or internship credit uh, by working in the clinic. Next slide. Um, during the first half of the semester, uh, Mike, and, Mike and the part-time staff will uh, See, do things like uh, customer, in, you know, uh, machine intake, uh, and dealing with cu customer service issues while uh, the students are being prepared. They're learning the procedures and learning some of the details that we want them to actually take into industry uh, to uh, incorporate these these skills before, uh, as the slide says, before they're let loose on the customers. And uh, we found this by way of experience that it was absolutely necessary to have a little bit of grooming in place before we allowed uh, student intern uh, customer interaction. Next. 
our customers are restricted to uh, members of the OTC family. Um, OTC students uh, are, uh, I guess, mostly aware of this. We see a lot of business. Uh, it's reflected in our turnaround time. Uh, the OTC faculty uh, think, uh, evidently, uh, based on what they say, uh, it appears that they they're quite fond of us for performing small miracles and other uh, actions that have helped uh, retrieve lost data or revive dead machines. And the OTC staff brings machines to us as well. Uh, it should be noted here that on numerous occasions the local Best Buy Geek Squad has referred machines to our clinic when we had uh, when they had problems they could not solve. So we view that as a mark of honor. Next. Um, parts and tools, uh, Mike has ultimate say in what gets purchased, uh, but uh, when, say, uh, a laptop comes in with a bad screen, well, the student who receives that for repair is responsible for finding the make and model of the replacement screen and, and uh, documenting that along with the price and ordering information. And, uh, of course, this goes past Mike uh, before uh, any ordering takes place. Mike is also uh, a, a collecting point or clearinghouse point for information regarding tools and materials. Uh, we have a, a pretty good shop in terms of uh, spare parts. Uh, sometimes machines are, are orphaned there. They're brought in. It's been determined that they're uh, going to cost more to repair than they're worth. Customer simply says, "We'll just keep it. Then I'll go buy a new one, or I have another machine." So we've uh, accumulated quite an, uh, an inventory of spare parts that uh, uh, can come in helpful in repairing other computers. Next, please. Um, going back to Mr. Campbell, uh, Kelly saw the need for uh, something to so a hands-on, real-world component to augment uh, our PC hardware A plus uh, curriculum. And uh, Kelly had spent uh, 19 years in the Air National Guard uh, repairing helicopters. And so he had a pretty good military discipline background regarding procedures and uh, documentation. Uh, he brought those skills with him to Debbie, are you still there? We can't hear you. We just lost you. <laughs> David, can you hear me? We can't hear you anymore. Talk into the chat. Okay. Back. He's back. Am I back? Okay. Yeah, you're back. Sorry about that. Yeah, I leaned over and hit the mute button. Duh. Um, at any rate, uh, the uh, clinic was created in order to meet a need and uh, uh, Mr. Campbell brought military discipline to that effort, and uh, he also saw the need to give students experience with repair, and his his big concern was customer service training, uh, seeing to it that end users were being listened to and that they were, uh, the, the intake was being documented as well. So, next slide. So our goal is to provide a service to the OTC community, um, and uh, that is a big influence in its operation. We we listen to not just the individual customer service, but our reputation across the campus and how people talk about us. Uh, we want to make sure that we are providing a real service. Now, I know that other colleges and other departments that have a practical component, for instance, OTC also has a, uh, a student-run restaurant that's open one day a week. Um, success uh, on efforts like these vary between departments and between disciplines. Uh, but I have to say, I think that our, our program has, has developed a, a very high reputation. I'm, uh, although I'm not directly involved in the, in the clinic's operation, I am quite proud. But uh, our, uh, our leadership team uh, has uh, also praised this and has given us guidance on uh, how to operate, uh, you know, and what, what best practices to employ, as well as local employers who are aware of us uh, doing this and uh, who are hiring our students. They think quite highly of the idea. So they're, they're able to provide input as well. Next. 
So one of the big challenges is uh, continuity. Uh, that is, we have new students coming in every semester, so the same training procedures are, are continually uh, being uh, visited. And uh, one of the one of the challenges is having somebody uh, being lucky enough to have a student who decides to take the class for two semesters. After the ha first half of the first semester, uh, they become a valuable training asset. And if they stay on for a second semester, uh, then they can help greatly with uh, training the students in the in the environment. Uh, however, this is rare. Very rarely does a student have the time or the resources to to uh, take the class twice. Uh, it's open though. We'll let them do it if they if they feel like they've got what it takes. Um, also, concern is uh, maintaining the area. Uh, clutter is an ongoing concern and uh, although the clinic area is not cramped, uh, having just lots and lots of machines to look after uh, does pose a challenge. So having an organizational method for storing parts, cabling, uh, adapters, etc. Uh, is uh, vital to keeping a, an orderly and efficient uh, work environment. Um, Finally, in this regard, the uh, relationship between customers and uh, the student staff, the, the students in the, in the clinic program, uh, is something that we want to groom carefully because often, uh, as you're probably aware as IT instructors and, and possibly people from industry, often customers are uh, a little on the tense side when they bring in their broken machine when their baby is not working and they've got a, they've got a uh, uh, work to grade or their presentations or other curriculum materials that are that are essentially trapped on a mach machine they tend to be a little bit edgy and so uh, getting students the student participants into the right frame of mind uh, to be somewhat empathetic rather than critical uh, is uh, an ongoing uh, concern for us as well next slide um, the benefits are obvious. We have real-world training for the students in our NET program. Um, we provide uh, affordable PC repair for, for our uh, community. Um, the, as I said before, I know I blow my horn a lot on this uh, about how, how positively we've been received, but I cannot overstate uh, the uh, beneficial effect and, and image that it has done for uh, our program as a whole. Um, for a long time, uh, our program uh, was one of the best kept secrets on the uh, on the OTC uh, college slate. Uh, it seems like when it comes time to advertise for your college or provide uh, some sort of public relations materials, you always get things involving people wearing scrubs and showers of sparks coming from the welding department or something else that's dynamic and has lots of color and activity in it. And frankly, people sitting in front of computers just isn't quite <laughs> quite the selling point that or the, the advertising that we need. So being able to, <clears throat> excuse me, just a moment. So being able to uh, provide something in, a, in what looks like a real world environment provides a positive image for us. Um, and uh, finally, uh, the place generates some revenue, and I'll talk a little bit more about where that money goes here in just a little while, but uh, it all goes to support the clinic and do things for the, for the net students. Next slide, please. So what does service look like? Well, it looks just like it would out in the real world. We uh, greet, we want to inform, explain, advise, uh, provide service, and then uh, follow-up is important too. We want to make sure that, that the end user is uh, uh, happy with, with uh, the outcome. And of course, every once in a while, you'll get the wild hair that you get the customer who cannot be pleased, but that's the learning experience for the, for the student participants as well. So uh, this is our general pattern of, of uh, of service, but uh, we emphasize listening to customers. Uh, we also emphasize documenting, 
And uh, we are very lucky in that we had a student uh, from several years ago who uh, created a product for us that I'll uh, outline here in a minute. And I noticed that the chance in his presentation, uh, he has a similar tool. So uh, it might be well, well worth looking at as uh, Mr. Witherspoon's presentation has uh, an actual product you can retrieve. Ours is homemade. But, uh, our, our, we make a best effort to uh, ensure customer satisfaction, and uh, we try to guide the, the customer in making informed decisions regarding uh, repairs, upgrades, or replacements. Next slide. Okay, average turnaround time varies depending upon what time in the semester it is. Um, things, uh, crisis time seems to uh, take place within about the last five or six weeks of, of the semester. Uh, but uh, when the semester starts, it might be three or four weeks. And this is one of the sticking points, one of the things that I, th I think we would like to find a way to improve. Unfortunately, with student training involved while this is going on, uh, it, it is very difficult to speed up the turnaround time. Um, but uh, it can be gotten down to three or four days uh, when we're operating at peak performance. But uh, the, the number of customers, the number of computers coming in and the student training level are really the key uh, uh, components in determining uh, how quickly we can get a machine back out. And of course, we favor quality over, over speed. So um, next slide, please. So in addition to doing simple repairs, we do have a number of products that we offer. Uh, we. Uh, sell licenses for malware bytes. Uh, we have a version of uh, antivirus software. I think we use Bitdefender that we offer for, for what amounts to cost, I think. Um, every once in a while, we'll have things like flash drives on sale. And uh, uh, we get good prices on those as well. And they're major manufacturer uh, uh, drives. They're not knockoffs. But uh, we also uh, provide data recovery and backup, um, hardware repair, and we actually even will go down and do some board level repair, uh, do a little bit of soldering from time to time if it's um, called for. Um, limitations on what we can do include anything belonging to Apple. It's just too tough to get parts and too takes too long to repair. Um, and I think uh, I, what the big problem they ran into is we'd have to be Apple certified in order to do something like this. So uh, that and phones and tablets, which are uh, not readily serviceable, uh, at least by our staff. We don't have time to train on that. Now, one of the points that I want to uh, bring up here is that uh, about, about a 90-minute drive from Springfield uh, is a community called Waynesville. Uh, I had a student this semester who had uh, been to the uh, technical uh, center that they had up there while he was in high school and came down here and was in my PC hardware class, uh, which made him quite an advanced student anyway and something of a challenge to teach to. But he informed me that they had a PC clinic up there. Well, I thought that was a wonderful idea. And so uh, I contacted the, the person in charge up there and the person in charge up there uh, a fellow by the name of Shane informed me that he had gotten the idea for his PC clinic from us. So we're seeing a little bit of uh, growth there. I bring this up uh, because uh, evidently Shane's program up in Waynesville actually does do work on phones and tablets. So we thought that was of interest uh, to uh, you know put that in the realm of, of possibility, however not uh, in the foreseeable future. Next slide, please. So the clinic first began operation in 2007, and this was about three years before Kelly retired. Uh, he had gotten it started. Um, he retired in 2010, and the clinic was moved in uh, the following. I think he retired, I forget exactly how it worked, but not long after he retired, the clinic was moved over to another location. Next slide. Clinics open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, uh, except when the college is closed. And uh, that means that we have a couple of weeks downtime here and there uh, in order to try to get things done. And uh, I should point out, too, that the clinic also supports all the classroom PCs. So the machines that we have in place, when, when, if we happen to be in class and a student's uh, lab machine fails, 
uh, we'll just pull that box right there and, and have somebody from clinic bring up a spare. So uh, we've got a pretty quick response time for classroom machines within a matter of minutes, actually, in most cases. But um, eight, to, 8 to 5 is the normal schedule. Uh, we are closing at noon for an hour for lunch, and also the clinic sometimes has to be closed when Mike Vest uh, has a class that he has to teach, because in addition to managing the clinic, he does teach as an adjunct for us. Next slide. So um, one thing that is of particular interest uh, is uh, where the money comes from and where the money goes. And the question came up when I was doing research for this is when did we begin to show a profit? And the answer is just about immediately. Uh, we had a lot of equipment from a, a, a program that we had in a, another community on a satellite campus that uh, discontinued. And so we were able to bring a lot of that back and, and use that for setting up uh, the bench machines for the lab, uh, for the work environment, and uh, a lot of spare parts and some other goodies that, that contributed. So um, we started uh, operating in the black right, right from the start. Um, the clinic, as it says here on the slide, is not for profit, but it doesn't mean we don't generate revenue. But we do uh, provide uh, fees for Skills USA competition and also for student conferences, things that, that students want to attend. We have a, uh, a day-long tech expo that takes place in the fall. We pick up their fees and their lunches for that. Uh, we do some other things, too, uh, with money, and you'll see this in a later slide. But the key component, and this was the brainchild of my, my colleague, Mr. Jibo, was to put together a, a scholarship program and name it in Kelly's honor. And so uh, top ranking uh, students in the network hardware program each semester, uh, you're, if you're at the top of the class, you get a $500 scholarship. So uh, very nice uh, kind of a perk, a nice thing to do. So uh, next slide, please. Um, originally, when the thing started, it started over in Kelly's area, and his his department was on the opposite side of the campus, and all they had for space was a storage room. Uh, and so he started in there. It had a lockdown area, had a had a cage with a lock, so we could secure stuff. Um, but he he managed to turn it into a into a work area, but he could only have a few students in there. There just wasn't enough room, and a couple of work tables, and that was about it. So uh, it started from pretty humble beginnings. It was a it was a kind of a back pocket operation to begin with. Next slide. Today the clinic is located in a high traffic area. It's high visibility. We have a sign outside, as you can see in the picture here. And students uh, in this hall here, this combines uh, classrooms from the uh, business department, and I think some English classes are taught over here. And uh, of course, the networking classes are in the right in this immediate area, as well as faculty offices. So it's well integrated into the general flow of student traffic, and the sign provides some significant visibility. Uh, and a lot of curious folks too, you know, people walking past and kind of peering in to wonder what it is that we're up to. But um, it's a relatively accessible area. Uh, but uh, some of the features that we added in order to increase visibility, including Getting the sign up there, as you see, uh, not, it's not a huge grandiose sign. There's no neon or flashing lights, but it's enough to uh, announce our presence. And then we put up a bulletin board, too, and it uh, rotates notices regarding things like virus alerts and uh, things we may have for sale uh, at a good cost in, in the, the uh, clinic and, and other general IT-related information uh, intended to be of interest uh, not just to nerds, but to uh, general traffic as well. But uh, the uh, the clinic is well integrated. It's nestled right in with the rest of the, the IT uh, effort at the college. Next slide. Mike Vest is the reason why this program has, why this, this uh, clinic has succeeded. Um, he has gone heart and soul into this, and I cannot overemphasize how important it is to have someone like Mike uh, doing uh, this kind of work. Um, he has absolutely, uh, no, it seems like, no limits in what he'll, he'll do uh, to make a legitimate effort for success. 
um, and uh, having the a dedicated full-time person such as in uh, such as Mike to do this uh, is a key component. You're going to have to have if you want to open a clinic, you're going to have to have uh, somebody who is dedicated to this. My recommendation is that it not be a full-time faculty member. Uh, you're going to have to find somebody around to to assist with this. But Mike's always looking for ways to improve operations and, and improve the, the uh, environment of the, of the work area and ensure that students are getting meaningful training. And Mike, in addition to running the clinic and teaching adjunct, he, he also writes curriculum for us. So we're really lucky to have him and we're sure he's not paid enough for what he does. Next slide. Cost is $40 above the uh, cost of parts. So, uh, of course, the, the rule, in, at least in our part of the country, is if we can't fix it, there's no charge. Um, there are some other services that are offered at cheaper rates. For instance, data backup and recovery, as you can see, is $10. Installing apps is $10. Anybody can bring a machine in and get, and get their questions answered free of charge. And we also have a reception desk. There's a, a receiving desk right by the front door. So if we can throw a machine on the bench and get it fixed in under five minutes, we're not going to charge them anything for it. So that's uh, a pretty popular thing there. If you've got a five-minute fix uh, and uh, you can bring your machine in and get it turned around and sent back out, that's uh, uh, a pretty good uh, public relations uh, uh, feature. Next slide. Um, we have one full-time uh, member, that's Mike. We have two part-timers, uh, that would be Josh and Alex. We'll see a picture of Alex here in a moment. Have up to three work-study students, so we've got people who are coming in and doing like 19 hours a week or something, uh, some hours like that. And then the, the, the uh, clinic has up to 15 uh, internship co-op students. And these are treated like jobs. You clock on and clock off. Uh, you, you do hours just like you would as if you were we're working somewhere in a, in a regular shop. Uh, so the, um, the the environment is uh, pretty uh, active. There are generally at least a half a dozen uh, people in the area during the day. And uh, uh, the students rotate in and out, and everybody has their own job load. Next. And uh, here we have one of our minions hard at work here. He's uh, uh, he got, this is a work study student. He's uh, busy troubleshooting something over on the bench. But uh, students uh, are involved in all aspects of operations, but they don't purchase parts. And we do actively encourage communication between the students. So breaking down that, that barrier of uh, non-communication between technical types is uh, one of the targets that we're focused on. Next. Um, students have to uh, go through a selection process. Uh, generally speaking, if you apply for it, you'll probably get it. Uh, but you have to have uh, been through the desktop hardware class before you can work in the clinic. We want you to at least know the basics of, of uh, how to work on machines before we turn you loose with them. And uh, the internship requirement means that you've completed a majority of your uh, A majority of your, excuse me, a majority of your your curriculum hours before you are uh, allowed to come in. But uh, ultimately, the interview with Mike uh, is where expectations are set, and uh, Mike communicates very clearly to each uh, interviewee or potential student uh, for the clinic uh, what's expected. So expectations are managed right from the start. Next. Um, this is the front desk that you see. Uh, and this is the first thing that you see when you come into the office. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a PC on the left of the desk there. There's a PC that's built with a clear case. Uh, that's one that I purchased years and years ago at Fry's Electronics during one of my little sprees in Dallas. And uh, I donated the clear case, so it, it's a nice... Uh, uh, attention getter. It's got lights in the case and a colored fan and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, this is where you, where the customer walks up to and, and lays the machine out and explains what's going on. But um, uh, we do provide priority service for faculty. 
uh, if they're stuck, in other words, this is their, their work machine, their only work machine, and they've got data trapped on that system, uh, and they need it for, for school use, uh, we definitely want to see to it we can get them turned around as quickly as possible. Next. Hey, David, this is Mark. I want to remind you it's 1030 right now, so we're halfway through it. So if you need to, like, increase your speech a little bit, because we had, do have maybe three or four questions from, from the uh, gallery for you. Just want to remind okay. You that. All right. I'll pick it up. Okay, clinic finances are managed. Uh, George and Mike managed to set up, a, worked with finance to set up a, a college-funded, a non-college-funded account. We also have our own purchase card, and George or Mike can purchase components on that. And uh, this lets us use uh, clinic funds for things that most budgets are not allowed to do, so we're able to fund uh, student activities. Next. Um, the clinic's uh, finances are managed, uh, well, asking here, it's the slide says how are they managed, but we'd like for you to know what we, some of the things that we do as well. Uh, providing uh, embroidered polo shirts for the students to wear on duty gives a professional appearance. Uh, they usually get a toolkit uh, for completing the course. Uh, George is a food fan, so he likes to see to it they go out to the local Italian restaurant and have, have a big lunch. And then uh, there's a scholarship, and then, of course, we purchase equipment for clinic use, and there's some other uses for that as well. Uh, next, please. So we continue to get positive feedback from almost all the students uh, and from faculty as well uh, regarding uh, performance and, and satisfaction with, with repairs. But the students who work in there just praise the, the experience. They're quite fond of uh, what they've undergone. And it's, it, in many cases, it's a transformative experience. I can say I've seen students come in uh, behaving in one fashion and coming out with a, with a whole new uh, uh, outlook. Um, unlike the classroom, we've, we've got uh, uh, this, this measure of uncertainty. You never know what's going to come in the door. And the experience really helps with their problem solving and documentation skills. Next. So uh, finally, this I was referenced a, a, a student product. It was a donation. The fellow just did did one in order to learn how to do it. He put together a, a customer ticket system for us. So he built the database in the UI, uh, built it in uh, Microsoft SQL, and used I think Access for a front end. And uh, really helps with uh, documentation and report generation, and, and it is a documentation uh, goldmine in terms of a learning tool for students. So, finally, uh, collation of knowledge is a big deal for us, and in fact, we learn from students because in many cases they're doing the active research. Uh, so they're they're researching a problem to try to figure things out, and so they bring information to us, which is a nice kind of turnabout. Next. So who needs to be involved? You need to start with the school administration. Get, get approval from them. Uh, you're going to have to have a manager, instructor. You're going to have at least one advisor. Um, keeping your other instructors in the loop is very important. They may want to participate if they have, to have resources to do so, in which case I encourage as many uh, faculty members being involved as possible. Uh, but in any event, keep them in the loop as to what's going on. It's uh, very important for everybody to know. Next. Uh, you're going to need an area you can lock down. You're going to need workbenches. And this pro provides power and data connections. Uh, you need some bench PCs to use for uh, internet connectivity and for testing purposes. Uh, you need your other connectivity for like KVM or network connections. Uh, local area, uh, I recommend having your local segment for the clinic itself. Uh, obviously, you'll need, an internet, you need internet access. And then you'll need a place to store or lock down customer systems and spare parts. Next. Uh, work ticket tracking system, a means of inventorying and documenting what's going on with machines. And I cannot overemphasize how important this is. Uh, it is a terrifying feeling to, to uh, have a, a, a customer ask what was fixed and uh, not being able to uh, provide some sort of detail as to what was done on the system. Um, if you're going to uh, put it on the academic schedule, uh, you need to uh, be able to uh, find room for it. Uh, your college IT department is going to be pretty valuable in dealing with uh, your network connectivity and possibly other aspects. 
Um, in, uh, of course, being at assessing student work, uh, some means of uh, providing an assessment uh, component. Uh, purchasing parts, of course, and then finally getting rid of dead hardware, uh, whether you can recycle it, that is strip it for parts or, or, or uh, dispose of it as e-waste is very important. Next. So what do we offer? Start with repairs and add features as you grow. And I cannot overemphasize also consistent hours of operation. It doesn't make a lot of sense to open clinic two days a week from noon until 4 p.m. I guess if that's what you you start with at first, that that's you know the best you can do. However, uh, availability is going to uh, going to be a big uh, uh, factor in the clinic's success. So, next slide. When to deploy? My recommendation is start planning for. Uh, beginning your deployment right after the spring semester is over and working through the best of the summer and planning for a fall opening. Uh, but before you do that, nail down support from the college administration and, and your IT departments before you proceed. Make sure you've got them on board. Next. Uh, you're at the mercy of the college for space. Uh, if you're really, really lucky, you might find a location like uh, something that is high traffic. Uh, we were exceptionally fortunate to have space open up for us, uh, but finding some place that is not, you know, rat holed away, uh, that you can actually uh, m create a presence uh, is a is a big part of success as well. Next, so starting the clinic is no small undertaking, but the rewards can be tremendous, and if you uh, plan this properly, uh, you'll you'll have a successful deployment. Um, I'll also, finally, uh, although I'm not directly affiliated with the clinic, if you have any questions, please contact me. I'll do my best to provide information or guidance. I can, I can get the folks to answer questions for me, and I'll be glad to be the point contact for that. Next. Okay. Right, thank you, David. I'm just, real, just real quick here, I have a couple of questions from the chat box. Um, not sure if it's covered, but what about liability insurance, the potential product insurance? So say a customer, um, a computer's released, and a customer gets a shock from, from poor student work. How do you guys address that? Well, um, you know, that is, that is a question that I did not ask. It never occurred to me. Um, however, I, I can say that uh, my department chair, Mr. Jibo, ran a PC clinic in Cincinnati, or PC uh, shop in uh, Cincinnati for several years, and I would imagine that uh, the system as tested should be shock-free when it comes off the bench. Uh, that's one of the things you would probably want to test for. If you, you put your hands into a chassis and discover that it's hot, you probably want to not let that go out the door that way. Um, if the, the customer, a couple of the cases we've had customers do things to machines uh, after they've received them and then come back and complain. Uh, not much we can do except try to be receptive and helpful in that regard. But regarding insurance, uh, I do not know. I must admit. Okay. Okay. Thank you, David. Because our presser time is going to, we're going to move on. Uh, the, the other questions that we got in the chat box, I will send to you later. We'll send, send the answers around. So, uh, Chance, if you're there, let's go ahead and we can start with you now. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Let's go to the next slide, please. We do it a little bit different uh, at CTC. Uh, we don't, our PC repair class, it, it's more of a class. It's only open uh, during the actual class session. So it's not uh, a clinic that's open uh, nine to five every day or anything like that. We teach it as part of a course called CTS 220, which is our advanced hardware and software uh, repair class. Um, it's the second level hardware class so the students have already gone through the first level class and learned how to do basic troubleshooting on a PC and already have some A-plus uh, certification preparation. Uh, so we, well, they already have some experience, and I, I'm fortunate in that I, I teach the first level class, so I know the students when they come into uh, the second level, the PC repair class. And so that's been pretty fortunate uh, for me and that I know the students as they come in and, and know what their skill level is ahead of time. We do this in a, a hybrid format. Uh, where we either meet three hours or sometimes four hours. It's a five contact hour class, and uh, we meet for three or four hours uh, one time one time a week. Uh, and then the students do have one or two hours of online work each semester, 
and, and in that case, they're basically, uh, I have them sometimes keep a, uh, a journal of what they've worked on, things they've learned. Uh, they do some outside assignments and readings and preparation um, study, uh, test preparation for the A+. Uh, we also have them do some things that, um, you know, working on like creating their own uh, workbench form, uh, creating their own documentation, working on different things, just making them think about some processes and systems that are involved in, in doing a PC repair uh, a shop if you had one. And it does run 16 weeks. Uh, we only run this class once, one time a year in the fall. And I, I would love if we had enough uh, students to run it both semesters because in the spring, I get, uh, I get uh, students stopping by fairly regular in the spring wanting uh, to have their computers repaired, and we just we have to tell them sorry. We have you have to wait until the fall. Uh, so it, that is something that we run into. I am a full-time faculty member, so that works out pretty well uh, in that we only meet one time a week, and oftentimes the students uh, or the, the the members that are customers that are bringing in their computers, they're coming by at different times throughout the week to pick up their computers. So uh, the logistics of that work out pretty well with me being a full-time faculty. So that's something to consider if you uh, try to run a class with an adjunct. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what we do in the first week of the class, uh, we, we start getting computers right away. Uh, students is kind of uh, the students and faculty and staff and um, community members they know in the fall the class uh, exists, and so we start getting computers right away. So normally we only spend about one to two weeks kind of, kind of getting everyone up to speed. And like I said, I've had the students in the first level class, so uh, they already have some knowledge of what's to come. Uh, I do try to set the expectations and, and what I expect from them. We cover particularly cover uh, uh, ethics that are involved with dealing with customers' computers. What happens um, if you're on someone's computer and you're not going around snooping and looking at their files or their pictures? We also discuss some ethics of all. What if you were to see some material that uh, pirated software, or, uh, you saw some pornographic material or things like that that may come up when you're dealing with uh, personal information on a customer's machine? We also talk about how, we're, and I'll come back to this in a later slide, how we're going to organize the class. Uh, I do it a little bit different each semester, but we, we talk about how we're going to organize the structure, uh, whether we're going to work in teams or uh, uh, individual, that sort of thing. And uh, we also, in the introduction, talk about uh, the help desk software we use, and I have a slide on that. We use a software called OS Ticket, and then we discuss our intake process. What does the process look like from start to finish with when the customer walks in the door until the time we close out the ticket at the end of the process? Okay, next slide. So these are some of the expectations I have for the students is that they treat the class like a job. I encourage the students if the class starts at 9 o'clock to, to be there 15 minutes early. Uh, treat it like a job. Get there early. Get ready to go. Uh, a lot of times the students, uh, I've had to run students out. The class runs from, from 9 to 12 a.m. And, and, and they want to stick around until 12, 30, 1 o'clock or 1, 30 sometimes. But just uh, a lot of students really love this class and the, the course evaluations. Uh, I would say every semester students uh, say, leave feedback and say that it's the, the, the funnest class, the best class they've had uh, during their time here. They really love getting that hands-on experience. So, uh, but I do, I do expect them to treat it like a job, to, to be professional, uh, to, to work well with others, and to treat the customer uh, first. We also, I expect them to follow procedures that we define. Uh, also, very important is to respect the customer's property. Uh, we are dealing with uh, someone else's property, and so we have to, uh, you know, we've had issues in the past where students have, have not respected the property and had to deal with those. Uh, something I can't, I can't emphasize enough is uh, documentation, and David mentioned that as well, but documentation is extremely important. Uh, we've learned the hard way on that when students fail to document. That seems to be one of the the biggest areas of need uh, for our students is to learn how to properly document. Uh, the, the documentation is very difficult for them. They don't have a lot of experience, it seems, uh, documenting the steps they've taken. They don't, you know, they don't document what they've done on the computers, and so we really try to uh, drill that into them by the end of the class that they have to document everything. You can't document enough. Uh, also, not to be afraid to ask for help. Uh, sometimes students are afraid to ask for help at, at first, and they don't. Um, you know, they start working on a computer and they may spend two hours when if they would have just asked uh, myself or another uh, student in the class, they could have uh, moved on and had the problem solved quickly. So don't be afraid to ask to help. And, and then also to cl uh, collaborate with classmates. I really expect them to work together and to collaborate. Uh, each student has different skill sets and experience, and so we try to rely on each other and have them collaborate throughout the course of the class. All right, next slide. Here are some of the benefits for the student. 
obviously uh, they are getting that real world troubleshooting experience. You know, that's something you can't learn very well through reading a textbook or taking practice tests or doing even online uh, simulation, simulated labs, which we use in our first level class. Uh, so this real world troubleshooting experience is invaluable and uh, it's, uh, we, we have to do it. Uh, and it's great for the students to do that. They also get the experience actually repairing the computer. So a lot of a lot of students may have troubleshooted some software issues in the past, but they they've never taken out uh, they never uh, taken out an LCD screen and replaced it. Uh, they maybe they've they've never uh, had to uh, add new RAM to a, a machine, and so they get this hands-on repair experience. They they don't know how to test a, a power supply unit, and so they learn how to do some of these things during the course of the semester. Uh, they also learn how to uh, problem solve. They get a lot of experience problem solving and also working and doing that in a collaborative setting. Uh, and that's something that's really important is being able to work with others and, and to, to solve problems. Uh, one of the greatest benefits that we see, and we get this feedback from employers in our area, is that students, when they come out, they do not have the soft skills, the emotional intelligence, uh, if you will, to that, that's required to be successful in today's industry. And so we really try to focus in on the soft skills development I have the students, uh, in addition to tracking everything they do in the help desk and sending reply emails to the customers in the help desk, also have them call the customers. Uh, I don't do the calls for the students. I have them call, speak with the customer. I, I pay attention and listen very carefully as they're talking, um, you know, talking to the customer. And I try to give them feedback periodically throughout the semester on how, how they're doing in, in their communication with, with each other in the class, with me, and also with, uh, with the customers. And that's the really important thing is for them to develop those soft skills. They also get some experience using help desk software. I think that's important. Uh, we do cover things like uh, SLAs and uh, service level agreements. We don't really use those in the class, but we talk about it, and we, uh, they do get some real world experience working in a help desk environment. And then also some technical writing experience. Again, that goes back to the documenting. I have them document the processes they follow. If they're sending an email to a customer, I have them you know, practice some technical writing, writing out some procedures and step-by-step -step directions for you know, doing updates to your machine or something like that. So they get some experience there. Uh, next slide. Um, the, the way we organize the class, uh, I try to run this co course as a PC repair small business. And so I, I do it a little bit different. This is one of those things that's pretty fluid and it depends on the number of students. Most of the time our class has around, uh, I'd say six to 10 uh, students. Uh, each semester, and I, I try to I do it a little bit different and flexible each semester based on the students that I have. Some semesters I've had, this, for example, this past semester, I had a guy that uh, that was basically um, um, he's a manager at a, at a fast food restaurant chain, and uh, he's been a manager in a restaurant setting for quite some time. He also he does IT for him and that sort of thing. But he had a lot of experience managing other people, and so. And this past semester, we actually decided as a team, as a class, I let the students have some input on this, how do we want to organize this process? Do we want to designate certain people to be basically the customer service representative that talks with the customer when they walk in the door? Or do we want to have it just kind of free for all? Whoever, you know, whoever's free can go speak with the person coming in. Uh, and so we ended up deciding this semester we had kind of a team. We had a, a customer service representative team, that two, two students that took all the customers when they came in. We had uh, this other student who was the manager who kind of over, over, oversaw the, 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 the help desk and kind of managed the process and kept everybody on task. He also repaired computers when, uh, when, it, when he was not doing these other tasks. And so it kind of varies. We, uh, there's, I don't have a good solution or um, one that I would recommend. I try to do this uh, a little bit different each semester and it's one of those things that's fluid and changes. And uh, a lot of times um, I mentioned here that if you have a weak student, I try to pair, and again, I know these students because I've had them from the previous year and previous class. So if I got a student who may be a little bit weaker, don't, that does not have the experience or maybe even the knowledge uh, to just be turned loose on a machine by themselves, a lot of times in that, in that scenario we'll do teams and we'll pair up a weaker student with a stronger student uh, and so that they can kind of learn from that other student and, uh, and, and have the best experience in the class. Uh, next slide. So here's our intake process. We do have a, uh, again, normally a, a designated person, and some of these tasks and duties uh, rotate, but we do have a kind of a designated person that greets the customer when they come in. We do have a service agreement. We, this, is, this is a little bit different from the way David, uh, David's uh, uh, program runs. We, we do this free of charge. We don't charge the students anything. 
uh, and we do we do have the customer sign a service agreement. Basically, it, do, it, it removes the liability uh, from the college. We don't charge anything. They're basically uh, signing away their rights to the machine and say, okay, we're letting a student work on this for a learning experience. I'm not being charged for it. Um, and uh, so that's, that's uh, something we do is we do this uh, customer service agreement and uh, they, they sign it and basically turn the machine over to us, understanding, and we we're very upfront that this is a class, it's an educational experience. Uh, the students know what they're doing, but uh, if something was to happen to go wrong and we can't fix it or we mess something up, uh, it's not going to be the college's fault. The customer has to buy the parts. We don't do any purchasing. However, the technicians or the students do find the part for, uh, for the customer. I always review that. I always have them. If I have a manager in the class, I have the manager review the part selection, and then I'll review it. And then we uh, we have at that point we have the student through the help desk or through phone call let the customer know which part they need to buy. Um, uh, other things on the intake process, we obviously want to uh, document everything very well. Things that we've run into that you want to make sure you you get is uh, make sure you get the password to the computer. How many times that's happened? Uh, where we don't have the password and we can't get in touch with a person because we have the wrong email address or they didn't leave a phone number. And so uh, we've learned some things over the, over the years to have, uh, improve this intake process. One other very important thing is that you uh, tag your equipment. Uh, we, we use a sticker system. We, we tag it uh, in the help desk, obviously, with the serial number, model number. We also write tags and put the help desk ticket number and name and phone number uh, on, on the individual uh, equipment items. And that also includes the, the power supply adapters for the laptops. Uh, we've had instances where those have kind of got mixed up in the past, and so we've learned that lesson the hard way. Next slide, please. Uh, you can't really see this well, but if you get a copy of the slides here of the presentation, you'll, you'll be able to see this is just our, uh, our basic intake form uh, that the students fill out. So they, a lot of times the customer comes in, they, uh, the customer service rep sits down with, uh, with the customer. They get, walk through this. They do some basic kind of uh, probing questions to figure out what is the general idea of the problem going on, and they, they fill out this form. And then it's assigned to a technician, and they input it into the help desk. Next slide. OS Ticket is the help desk software we use. It is open source and free, um, and so th that's great. Um, I was since I since I do web technology as well, I was able to just uh, throw this up on a on a server, and uh, we run it uh, through a domain, uh, through a, a custom domain that the students log into, and uh, it is open source and free software. I recommend it. It works really well. It's a good piece of software that I, I know even uh, uh, some industry um, co companies and in actual industry use for free help desk software. We also have a dedicated phone in the class, and that's, uh, that's very useful. Next slide. So the, the repair process, once the, once the, uh, the, the intake process has, has occurred and the ticket's been generated, then it's assigned to a technician. Obviously, at that point, the technician uh, begins troubleshooting and diagnosing the problem. I, again, I encourage them to consult with other classmates and myself as well if, if they need it. They complete the repair, and then all along the way, they're documenting and uh, contacting the customer if needed. Again, um, doing some documenting when they've called, when they've replied in the help desk, um, put, posting internal notes in the help desk. All these things are, are very good. Uh, and then they also fill out a, a workbench form. And I think if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll be able to see this is a copy of our, our workbench form. Next slide, please. This is a copy of our workbench form or status sheet. This is what the technician fills out the student fills out as they are working on the machine and kind of documenting their process. Uh, after they've uh, filled this out on paper copy, I also make them go in and post internal notes in the help desk. So that way we have, again, documentation multiple ways, on paper and also in the help desk. Next slide. Some common issues that we see that you would run into, uh, that again, this is the type of work that we see on a general uh, ongoing basis, and this is virus and malware cleanup. That is the most common. Uh, PC tune-ups, my computer's slow. You know, that's the very common. Uh, uh, the customer comes in and says, my computer's really slow. Can you fix it? Uh, running into system updates. Uh, we do operating system upgrades from maybe Windows 7 to Windows Windows 10 or Windows 8. It just depends. We've had, we've had computers come in. I had a computer come in this last fall that was still running Windows 98, believe it or not. So all kinds of things that come in. Uh, uh, broken LCD screens are very popular. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good experience for the students. Uh, uh, that are working on this is to learn how to actually uh, replace a, a broken LCD screen. I, I enjoy 
you know, I enjoy seeing the students getting to do that because most of the time they're terrified to take apart a laptop and, and take out a screen. But after they've done it one time, they just they enjoy it and they love it. It's a great experience for them. Uh, hard drive failures, operating systems not loading, forgotten passwords. Uh, that's a that's one that they and they love to figure out too is how to reset a Windows 7 password uh, using something like Hiren's Boot CD. It's pretty, that's a good uh, a good learning experience. Mainly what we're seeing now is that recently, and this is a transition, we're seeing more and more laptops. We don't get a lot of desktops coming in. And as David mentioned, we, we do get a lot of tablets and, and handheld uh, uh, phones coming in. And we don't really work on those most of the time, but uh, for the same reasons David mentioned in their program, we don't do a lot of work on tablets or uh, cell phones. So we, we will look at it and try to diagnose the problem, but most of the time if it re requires parts or any kind of hardware issue, that's, uh, that's something we don't really work on. Next slide, please. Uh, some, and I just put this in for your information. If uh, if you decide to start a clinic or a class like this, these are the general tools that we that we use that I recommend that the students uh, are trained on at the very beginning of the class and they use throughout uh, throughout the course of the class. And that is, we use a vast or AVG free antivirus, um, malware bytes, super anti spyware, seed cleaner. Those top four programs are what we normally run to, to remove uh, malware and, and uh, add antivirus protection on the computer and also to kind of clean up and opt optimize the machine. A great piece of software or website, actually, if you've never seen it, is Ninite. Ninite.com is awesome. It allows you to install multiple uh, applications at one time. Can't tell you how much time this saves in a, a new operating system install or just doing an upgrade of existing software uh, it's, it's a great, a great website. Uh, a couple other things that you'll need is uh, we, we like to use Hiren's Boot CD or Ultimate Boot CD, Boot CD for different tasks, whether we're doing some partitioning or, uh, again, maybe trying to uh, reset a, a password that we've been locked out on Windows 7, and then having copies of operating systems um, on, on, on DVD or on flash drive is also helpful. Next slide. And here's a good list of just some general tools that we've we've kind of collected over the years. Uh, one that, I, that we actually just ran across this past fall that's been a great tool is called the iFixit uh, Toolkit. A student actually had this in the class. And uh, you can only buy it uh, from either iFixit. I think it may be available on Amazon too, but it's a great kit for working on smaller, uh, uh, for smaller uh, devices, uh, particularly if you are going to be looking at tablets or smartphones. It's a great toolkit for that, but also laptops has all kinds of uh, great little uh, tools for working on mobile devices. Uh, PC vacuum, I would recommend that. We get some very dirty machines coming in. And uh, so that's a, that's a great thing to have. We've had, in the past, we've had to take uh, desktops outside and try to blow them out because they were so uh, covered up in dust. Uh, other things, thermal paste, uh, you need to make sure you have some of that. And then a couple other things at the end here, uh, post tester, and multimeter, power supply tester, these are good tools uh, to, teach, uh, to teach students how to use when they're doing some more advanced uh, testing of the hardware failure. And next slide. And that's, that's all of my slides. Any questions? Yeah, thank you, Chance. I, I do have a couple of questions in the chat box. Do you have any students that drop the class? And if so, what are the numbers and, and, and what are the reasons that they drop it? Um, you know, honestly, over I, I've been teaching this class for maybe five years now, and I don't I, I don't recall a single student ever dropping the class. Um, every student that I've had really likes the class. Um, we've had some challenging students. We've had issues where students have. I had one student one one time that actually uh, installed a pirated version of some kind of software on the machine he was working on, and so we have some. Special cases like that, or that we, you know, those are learning experience. We use them. We use those as learning experience. But, you know, I, I don't know that I've had an instance that a, a student's actually dropped. Okay, great, thank you. So there are a few more questions in the chat box. I, I, I captured those in the documents. I will get those answered. And when I send everyone the slides and the link to the recording, I will get those answered for you. So you'll have all that. Um, we just press for time. I don't want to waste any more time and um, go go long past eleven. So next slide, please, Christine. So thank you very much to David and Chance Bell for taking the time. This is very interesting. Uh, hopefully everyone on the call got something out of this and maybe you consider implementing this other thing at your program. If you would, please, there's a link there for the survey. Um, we would appreciate your feedback, what worked, um, what, what did you respond to, 
what are your plans from this webinar that would be very useful for us in the future um, for these sorts of things. So please take a moment uh, to do that survey. Um, so thank you again, David and Chance, and thank you everyone for joining us, and um, we appreciate your time. Thank you.